Alex, what's your approach to the QB position this season? <laughs> it's very similar to what it's been for the last 10 years, Steph, and that is late quarterback, man. Late quarterback just makes too much sense, and it's no different this year because in these one quarterback leagues, there is no scarcity at the quarterback position at all. That makes them far less valuable. When you think about it, if, if there's, you know, we'll say the average league size is 12, 12 teams in your in your fantasy league, there's 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL each and every week, aside from bye weeks. But there's much more than 12 quarterbacks that are going to give you value on a week in and week out basis. So because of that, it means all the teams in your league, unless someone, there's always that one guy that hoards all the quarterbacks, but everyone should be able to get a piece of that weekly upside at the quarterback position and get someone who can put up solid production. We see year in and year out the different kinds of quarterbacks that can give you weekly upside. I mean, we've seen Ryan Fitzpatrick be the QB one on a get on any given week in a good matchup. We've seen Daniel Jones have multiple top two, top three quarterback weeks already in his young career. And even if you look at the the full scope of the season, unless you are that record-breaking Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson type of guy, typically you're just not getting a lot of value above replacement at the quarterback position. If we look at last season, Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson put up four more fantasy points per game than Gardner Minshew. Like Justin Herbert... This amazing breakout season, Lamar Jackson, this cheat code rushing quarterback, four more fantasy points per game than Gardner Minshew. Now, that is four points per game, but Gardner Minshew's free. He's sitting on waiver wires, and you can plug him in on any given week and probably get 18 points and be fine. Where Lamar Jackson's a guy you're taking in round four, where you could have had an upside running back or an upside receiver that's making a difference for you week in and week out. So that's the problem with drafting the early quarterback, you're typically not getting value above replacement on guys that are just sitting out on the waiver wire. Last season, 14 quarterbacks were within three fantasy points per game from the quarterback 12, Matt Ryan. So that means there's essentially like 25, 26 guys out there that are all within two, three points per week of being a QB one. And to me, that's not the same kind of difference that a Miles Sanders is over a handcuff. You know what I mean? So to me, like I'm taking Miles Sanders and Justin Fields over Lamar Jackson and James Conner all day. And that's kind of how you have to think about it. You have to look at the guys that are available when you're taking that early quarterback and look at the guys that are available when you're taking a late quarterback and just think like in a trade, which side would I rather have? and start to move in that direction. So this year, it's no different for me. There are plenty of upside quarterbacks late in these drafts, which we'll continue to get into as we talk about our strategy in more depth. Um, but yeah, man, the late round quarterback, round eight, nine, 10, even sometimes in the double digit rounds is a smash for me in 2021. Yeah. I, I If anyone who's watched the show since 2019 knows we've been all about the late round QB, last year's targets work, <laughs> You can stream. You can stream all season, and you listen to us in the season. Here are starts of the week, and you will be smashing Derek Carr in good matchups. Ryan Tannehill Mitchell Trubisky. was w- Mitch Trubisky. Like we are getting 20, 25, 30 point weeks out of some of these guys that are sitting on your waiver wire. So to me, it's like, why am I spending draft capital at a position that I could probably stream each week and be just fine? Now this year, I do think things are are shifting a little bit. I'm not going to overcorrect course and, and pull the trigger too early on Mahomes, Allen, Kyler, Russell Wilson, Tannehill, Stafford, Brady, all these names that are, are quality NFL quarterback names. But I do think we are starting to th- see things shift. And this year, more than past years, I'm more willing to grab a Justin Herbert in the sixth round or – a Jalen Hurts in the late seventh, early eighth. Because it's not like in past years anymore where there's one quarterback over 25 points per game and the rest are at 20 or less, right? We saw that with Lamar Jackson. He broke the QB position, had 28 fantasy points per game. That season in 2019, no one else was over 22 fantasy points per game. In 2018, we had Mahomes breaking out for his MVP season. No one else even close to him. In 2017 and 2016, no quarterback averaged over 25 fantasy points per game. Then last year, 
We had three starting quarterbacks average over 25 points per game with a bunch of guys in the 24 point range. Could that have been because of, you know, COVID and the lack of preparation causing defenses to be less prepared? We also saw a bump in points scored and passing production during the lockout year as well. Maybe that's all this is, but based on the influx of quarterback talent in the draft, the plethora we now have of these mobile, hyper-efficient passers that have come into the league and are now hitting their stride, I'm actually okay to ride this wave when we've seen all these young QBs breaking out over the place lately from Lamar Jackson to Mahomes. We also had Kyler, Josh Allen, Deshaun Watson. We could be seeing Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Trey Lance break into this tier as soon as 2022, just a year from now. And we're, we're talking about our draft strategies. Like we could be talking about those three in the same tier. So I think in 2021, there's, there's a solid top seven quarterbacks that we project to be difference makers for your roster. And that's actually a lot more than most seasons, even without Deshaun Watson, assuming he's not playing football this year. So that top tier, it's Mahomes, Allen, Kyler, Lamar, Dak, Wilson, Herbert. And with there being so many of these difference makers, right, more than we've had previously, that can go for 35-plus fantasy points on any given week. I think you can actually give your roster a weekly disadvantage if you don't grab one of the top guys and just rely on a streamer. Now, I'm still fine, to your point, with the, you know, Cam Newton, Joe Burrow, strategy last year or you know the year prior it was Gardner Minshew Jameis Winston stack and Winston threw for 5,000 yards that he returned on that investment but a few years ago you would have been fine with a weekly Drew Brees or Matt Ryan type as you're set it and forget it starter I don't think that's going to give you the juice anymore so at the end of the day I think it's really for every fantasy player knowing where the values are knowing where you have your tier breaks in these quarterbacks for me this year it's it's Jalen Hurts If Jalen Hurts hits the eighth round, I'm hitting draft, and that's it. That's the rule. It doesn't matter who else is on the board. It doesn't matter my roster construction. If I'm sitting there without a QB and Hurts is there on the eighth, I'm taking him every time. I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and, you know, some people will disagree on Hurts. We can have a full show breaking down Jalen Hurts, I'm sure. But this (laughs) year, the the best rosters that I've put together in, in these mock drafts, both live and simulated, the best approach to me is to kind of treat the quarterback position like the tight end position. You know, grab one of the top guys and, you know, that fifth, sixth, seventh round or just punt the position until, you know, the late double-digit rounds and then grab two of them like a Justin Fields-Cam Newton combo. You know, knowing that, look, Cam Newton's probably not going to be the starter for the entirety of the season, but when he was the focal point of that offense, he was putting up fantasy numbers. Yeah, you can pick them up on waivers after your draft. And honestly, like I'm with you in the sense that I, that mid-round quarterback, there is a value pocket for me this season. I know I just talked about wanting to go late quarterback, and typically that's the strategy I take. But for you, you said it was Hurts in round eight. For me, it's Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray. Right now, both of them are going mid-round five. But if either of those two guys fall to round six, I'm drafting them every single time because – The difference makers to me are the guys that have the massive rushing upside and that can be drafted in the middle rounds. Like even a Patrick Mahomes going in round three, that's really hard to return on that value. But a Lamar or a Kyler, if they make it to round six and they can rush for over a thousand yards, add some touchdowns on the ground as well, they definitely could return on that value and give you that positional advantage each and every week. That's the Odell Beckham, Kareem Hunt, Brandon Ayuk tier. And I think Lamar... And Kyler arguably are going to be a a bigger difference maker for my roster. And the real value above replacement there can be illustrated by Lamar Jackson's record-breaking MVP season. He averaged six more fantasy points per game than the quarterback two. So even if the guy you were playing against had the second best quarterback, you were getting six more points per game from Lamar Jackson. He averaged 12 more points per game than the quarterback 12 in that season. So he was giving you a tremendous positional advantage that is the kind of upside worth drafting early in those middle rounds at the quarterback position and I'm not saying you need like a Kyler or a Lamar uh, to put up an insane record-breaking year but if they can get close having one of those guys in round six with the rushing upside 
is worth the shot. And I agree with you. There is that top seven this season, but for me and my rankings, how I'm evaluating these guys, Lamar and Kyler are the two I'm smashing in round six. And to your point, if I don't, if I don't get one of those two, I'm going to wait and I'm going to take a Justin Fields and a Trevor Lawrence or a, you know, a Joe Burrow and a Trey Lance later on. And it gets even more important to go quarterback early when you get into some formats like standard leagues, like half point PPR leagues, even, you know, 14 and 16 team leagues where waivers Mm -hmm. are going to be a lot more shallow. I I think this year more than others, you need a good quarterback in, in some of these leagues. And the whole mindset here on quarterback when there's only one of them, you have to start is you want to shoot for upside more than anything else. Whether you do get that top seven QB early and you go Alex's route with the Lamar, Kyler, or you go my route with the Hertz, like either way, we're shooting for upside there. But whether you do that or not, or you know, you wait until the twelfth round to take a quarterback, you want to give yourself the opportunity to turn a late round pick into a league winning pick. And and maybe you can get there with Tom Brady this year. You know, maybe Rodgers comes back and repeats his, his MVP performance last year. Maybe Matt Stafford explodes in, in this new Rams offense. I'm sure they're all going to give you high floors and they're going to have boom weeks in the right matchups. But you can find Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, names on the waiver wires that's going to give you the same weekly output. You know, we, we know what teams will put offenses into into boat race game scripts these high scoring games we know what teams have bad defenses during the season we can even use vegas over underlines to get us you know 80 percent of the way there i mean last year we had mitch trubisky and even like nick mullins as like desperation one week plugins but I think this year, if you don't get one of those top guys, you got to swing for the fences with a player that's value is depressed because of the unknowns. And those to me, that tier is Trevor Lawrence, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Tua. Um, in recent mocks, I've been going with like Trevor Carson Wentz, right? So I get the upside that Trevor Lawrence is all he's cracked up to be. And he's a, used a ton in RPOs by Urban Meyer. And he's a huge rushing upside or that Carson Wentz, can somehow repeat that that magical 2017 to 2019 stretch, right? Or maybe Justin Fields and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick plays the Chargers in week one. Should be a really fun game from a game script and point scoring perspective. Love to throw in Fitz Magic week one. See if I can survive until Fields becomes the starter. You know, and, and, and same thing if you go Lance and Cam. So don't waste a draft pick on these low offside quarterbacks. Don't, for the love of God, don't draft Big Ben. Don't draft Jared Goff. Don't draft Teddy Bridgewater. Don't draft Matt Ryan. They'll, they'll all end up back on the waivers in a couple weeks. You're better off going Zach Wilson over one of those guys just to mm-hmm. beat everyone in your league to the waiver wire. If Wilson does end up looking good for you know the first two weeks of the season, same could be said for Mac Jones once we're – in the swing of things, now the Patriots start losing games. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel for Cam Newton. That's the time to scoop up Mac Jones. So you got to shoot for upside. It's deeper than years past. There's value pockets for sure. And I, I think that's one thing for every player, fantasy gamer, to decide for themselves. You know, who's to say we're right and wrong about our evaluations of Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray. For you, it may be Josh Allen. Maybe you're all in on Josh Allen, and you just set that threshold to where if Josh Allen falls to the, you know, back of the fourth round, I'm scooping him up every time. 